Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at connecting a magneto optical disc to the iPhone. Now what is a magneto optical disc? Well, it is a storage medium that uses a combination of magnetism and laser optics to read and write the data. And so a laser does read the data back, the digital data back. You might think that it's very similar to a CD-ROM, but in fact it's much more similar to a regular hard disk. It even has disc sectors in it, and I'm going to pull this in, and hopefully you can see those little rainbow-colored rectangular dots on there. Those are actually the disc sectors. So this format was not popular in the United States, certainly not at a consumer level. Uh, it was much bigger in Japan. In fact, I bought this uh, USB drive from Japan. And I would bet that if any Americans have ever heard seen or heard of a magneto optical drive perhaps without even knowing it was a magneto optical drive it would probably be sony's uh, mini disc format from the 90s for playing and recording audio um, these are two and a half inch so they're quite a bit smaller uh, this was a really great format but just again never was very big in the united states much bigger in japan and in europe as well and Sony also had a, a data version of these as well. So most magneto, magneto optical discs were either in five and a quarter or three and a half inch format, which is the standard sizes for most discs anyway. And that's what this is. Um, this is branded a Logitech drive, but it's really a Fujitsu drive inside. And these are Sony 640 megabyte discs. The capacity on these was very good. Um, this was a contemporary of zip discs at 100 megabytes. So these were really good. I think they probably didn't catch on because of cost. Um, so anyway, let's take a look and see if we can get this to connect to the iPhone. I think it's really cool because Steve Jobs, when he left Apple and, and created Next, the early Next computers used magneto optical drives in them. And not just for removable media, like the entire hard disk was on them. You could take it with you to another machine and you'd have the operating system and your data on it. Um, it was horribly slow because these aren't the fastest things in the world. And back then with very little memory, virtual memory was, was very important. And if you can imagine trying to swap virtual memory out on magneto optical drive, it wasn't great. And eventually Next uh, did away with it and, and started offering the Next computers with hard drives. But there is a link to Steve Jobs with this and of course the iPhone. So I thought it'd be neat to see if we could get a magneto optical disc to work on the iPhone. So let's give it a whirl. I will go in and plug this into the USB to lightning adapter. That will power up the drive. Let's put the disk in. There it is. Now, if you're just going to copy data from here, it's pretty responsive, but um, playing media off of this is kind of slow. So I'm going to let it do a little bit of caching before we go looking at the actual video. You'll see the light here as it's kind of caching some of the information. See, it hasn't cached everything yet. It's kind of, it's kind of slow. And uh, let's see, I've got some YouTube safe music on here. So I'll go ahead and click on this song. And I'm going to set it down for a second. We'll let that cache for a little bit. I found that works best when you're playing directly off the drive. So we'll wait a few seconds before we start this up. Okay, so let's try to copy a file to the iPhone from the Magneto optical drive and see if that works. So I've got a song here on my iPhone, and we will copy that right to the drive. We'll 
This will take a few seconds. Not the fastest thing in the world, but the data storage capacity was great for its time. And the shelf life on these is over 20 years uh, easily, because it's probably much older than that and it's working great. It's a neat little format. I'm guessing it really was cost that kept it from being more successful than it was. And there it is. It's done copying. So if we go over to the drive, there's scratch the itch. So read write access on the iPhone. Pretty neat. I would like to talk a little bit about USB mass storage. I have learned a lot since this summer when I started this series. And if you see my one on floppy drives, you know that the standalone USB floppy drives didn't work. And I just assumed it was because it was a new cheap model and that the older ones probably worked fine. That's not the case. So I've done some research and when the USB consortium came up with that, those standards, they came up with some subclasses to help hardware manufacturers transition to using USB. So there was a SCSI subclass, a floppy subclass, optical media subclass, and a tappy removable media subclass. Now I have tested lots of different CD and DVD ROM drives and different floppy drives and people have gotten back with me and none of them work, the standalone USB floppy drives. So it's quite clear to me Apple is not supporting the uh, uniform floppy interface subclass or the uh, optical media subclass for USB. Since the zip drive and the Amation SuperDisk LS120 drive and now this Magneto optical drive work, I thought maybe the Atapi removable media subclass is supported, but I really don't because number one, there, it doesn't make any sense for Apple to deliberately restrict floppy drives and optical media and then allow Atapi removable media because, you know, only a madman like me is going to stick a zip drive into an iPhone. There's no audience there. And number two, they would have put eject buttons into the user interface for devices that identify themselves as a tappy removable media. Otherwise, there's no way to get the disk out. Right now, to get the disk out, I have to kill the power, plug it back in, and then hold down the eject button. So those two things tell me that the tappy removable media is also not supported. So these zip drives and magneto optical drives and LS120 are undoubtedly using the SCSI USB interface. That's what's used for flash drives, SSD drives, any kind of hard drive. It's fairly generic and you can mold it around your device pretty easily. So I think that's how it is. I think Apple is only supporting the SCSI USB mass storage subclass and any device that happens to use it just works by default. And um, even though that obviously was not their intention. So Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. I'm going to do more in the future with some other odd formats, and we'll see if they work with the iPhone, if they're using that SCSI USB subclass. But that's all for today. Take care. Bye.